Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shira and I post planner and lettering videos on this channel. So if you don't keep up with my Instagram, that totally fell as I was starting filming. Uh, if you don't keep up with my Instagram, you might not know, but I just got back from a trip to um, South Korea and Japan. So if you know anything about stationery, you would know that those countries are such great places to pick up stationery at. There's a lot of stationery that we don't typically find in box stores in the US that you can find there. So while I was there, I picked up a couple of things. Just wanted to do this quick haul video so you guys can see what I picked up in case you were traveling there and wanted to look for things or I don't know if you were just interested to see what I actually picked up. But yeah, so some of these things you can find in the US. To be honest, most of these things you can find in the US. Um, but they're usually not in the stores. You'll have to buy them online. And what I wanted to do was kind of just walk around the stores, be able to find things that I normally wouldn't know to pick up or I wouldn't because I don't normally see them in stores basically. Um, but yeah, so I'll go through all of the things I'll go through by categories. Um, I actually didn't go as crazy as I thought I totally would. Um, I expected to buy twice as much as this at least. Um, but I didn't go as crazy, like I said. Um, but yeah, I'll go through all of them and I will let you know kind of which country they were from, what store they were from, if I remember. Um, some of these things, um, even though they're the same things, I did purchase from separate stores. So I'll try to keep track of that as much as possible. So I want to go through these by category and I'm going to start with like pens and markers and other writing utensils first. So one of the first things I picked up is these mild liners. Um, Mild liners are obviously available in the US as well. Um, you can find them at stores like Target, to be honest. I'm not really sure what other stores you can find them at. Um, but I've bought a set from Target before. I do have the full 15 count. These are new colors. Um, I remember seeing Amanda Rachel talk about these. Um, these are newer ones that she also bought in Japan um, not too long ago. So I picked them up while I was there. Um, I think you can actually find these at Michael's now. Um, but yeah, so I picked up this color set to just complete the colors I already have. I think these are the more fluorescent-ish ones. I mean, they're not necessarily fluorescent because they are still my liners, but they're brighter colors. Next, I picked up some Posca paint pens. Um, I did pick these up from two separate stores. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly which stores I picked them up from. I believe that these ones I picked up from Don Quixote or Don Quiz, um, and these ones I picked up from Tokyo Hands or Loft. I believe they were from Loft, to be honest. Um, I know where most of the things are from, but this one I got a little bit mixed up on just because I did buy them from two separate stores, even though they're the same thing. So these three are all the same size. They are all the 1.8, or actually no, these three are all the same size. These are all the 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter width Posca pens. I got the primary colors, so red, yellow, and blue. Um, I do have these in black and white as well uh, that I purchased before going to Japan. This one is a 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter Posca paint pen in white. I do actually already have this, and I wasn't 100% sure if I did, but I picked it up anyways. Um, just because obviously while I was overseas, I didn't necessarily know exactly what I had back home, um, especially that my Posca paint pens are super new to me. I literally just picked them up probably a week or so before I left for this trip, um, but these I did pick up in Japan. These are smaller ones. These are the 0.7 millimeter. I'm not 100% sure if these are the thinnest, but 0.7 millimeter for reference is the size of a bold tip pen. So that's super thin for a marker. So I did get white, gold, and silver in those. So next I picked up some fine liners in, I believe, three different sizes. Yes. So these are the Deleter Neo Pico um, acid-free pigment ink um, fine liners. Um, these are waterproof, which is so awesome because I did start kind of watercoloring in my um, bullet journal. Also, um, water-based markers like the Tombow dual tip brush pens, they obviously, um, when you use them on top of pens, they do smudge the pen. Um, even mild liners are water-based, so um, that's something that you'll need to keep in mind when you use those. So I did pick these up. I got them in sizes. I got them in sizes 03, 
O5 and 1.0. So the O3s are the thinnest, the O5 is like a middle one, um, and then the 1.0 is really thick. Um, I do kind of go through phases where I like really thin lines in my bullet journal and times when I want thicker lines. Um, I didn't get all of the sizes. There is probably a 0.7 in the middle of these, um, but I didn't do that. Um, so these I got from Donkeys as well. Next, I got a high tech Coletto pen from the Sanrio store. So it is a Hello Kitty pen. I did pick up more um, stationary goods in Japan than I did in Korea. Um, but I'll mention kind of like I said what countries I picked them up from and the store if I remember specifically But so the high tech I picked up from the Sanrio store because I wanted to get a Hello Kitty one I did used to use um, The pilot high tech C in my planners. I might use it um, In my PP weeks, which if you didn't know I do have one or other planners. I don't typically use it in my um, bullet journal just because I like fine liners and other thicker pens in it typically. This is a 0.4 That's my preferred um, pen size for the high tech C. This is the Coletto Which means there's the four different colors and you click into them. There are four colors that come with it, which it's pink orange Blue and green it doesn't have black so I do have to pick up a black refill um, I could have picked up a black refill in Japan But I figured I would just pick it up here just because there's already four of them in it and I don't necessarily need the black right now. I picked this up in Korea, although it does say made in Japan, um, but I did get um, Muji pens in Korea. Um, Muji is literally everywhere in um, Asia. There was literally a Muji at every mall we went to, sometimes even at like subway stations or train stations. Um, I did pick up a couple of these. I got this one and the clicky one, which I don't have available to me right now. But I do actually prefer the clicky one. Um, I'm not. I'm kind of surprised that I never actually picked it up here in the U.S. There isn't a Muji near me, and I do actually have like a sock of Muji pens. I remember seeing a post saying that they are discontinuing these pens, so I did want to pick a couple of them up while they're still available. I'm not actually 100% sure if they're being discontinued, but these are some of my favorite pens to write with. I typically get the 0.5. Last thing in the writing utensils um, section is I got the Tombow Mono um, Mechanical Pencil. So like I said, a lot of these things you can pick up in the US. This one for sure you can mostly pick up here as well. Um, but obviously it was in front of me there. So I did get the um, monograph in 0.5 millimeter. Um, I did also get the matching um, lead that comes with it, as well as two of the matching erasers. I just don't have a mechanical pencil right now, or I do have one, but it's some random off-brand one. Um, and I wanted to get a nicer one to just use all the time and one that um, I'd find refills for. I've heard so many good things about the mono lines. So I wanted to make sure to pick that up while in Japan. Editing Shira coming in to mention that when I filmed this, I said that these were from Tokyo Hands, but I believe I actually got them from Loft. Oh, this isn't necessarily um, a writing utensil, but it's related to writing utensils. But I picked up this BT21 um, pencil case from the line store in Korea. I got it in Myeongdong, which is like a shopping district in um, Korea. Um, obviously, this is Koya, if you're familiar <laughs> with BT21. Um, so I picked them up, and this is just a fuzzy stuffed animal pencil case. Um, I figured I would bring this whenever I kind of meet up with people and want to bring some writing utensils. It is a little bulky, obviously, so it's not the most practical. I do have other pencil cases that are a lot more practical than this, but it was too cute for me to pass up. Next thing I'm going to go through is stickers. I actually did not pick up as many stickers as I thought I would um, in both countries. I picked up just some random ones, and honestly, a lot of them are of the same theme. So I got some B-side label stickers. Uh, which these are some really popular stickers in Japan. I found these both at two different lofts. I'm pretty sure I could have found both of them at the same one, but I just didn't buy them at the same time. Um, so the first one is Pom Pom Purin, which is a Sanrio uh, character. Um, this one's just on some fluffy pancakes, and I wanted to get it because I knew I was going to get some fluffy pancakes in Tokyo. Um, when we were in Japan, we mostly stayed in Tokyo, which I'll talk about that in the um, journaling video. But I did want to get this journal that potentially, but it's too cute to use that I might not end up putting it in my bullet journal. We'll see. 
The other one I got is one of Squirtle. Squirtle is one of my favorite Pokemon aside from Pikachu. So I just wanted to pick up a sticker of Squirtle because I barely found items for Squirtle at the Pokemon store actually. Um, so yeah, other stickers that I got. I got this embossed sticker of a Corgi with its butt just kind of hanging out. Um, from, I believe I got this from Artbox. Yes, I got it from Artbox in Korea, um, the one in Myeongdong. So I figured I'd get this. I thought I'd put it on my laptop. I'm still not 100% sure just because it is like an embossed sticker. It's not super thick, to be honest, um, but that's kind of what I intended on getting this for. That's not going in my planner at all, maybe on the outside of a planner. I got this set of stickers from Artbox. It's just some nice character stickers. You kind of see from the back the different kinds of stickers there are in here. They're made for planners and gifts, etc. Um, I just wanted to pick this up just because they were super cute and I thought it'd be cool to put these in my bullet journal as well. You'll kind of see some of the prices on some of the items that I'll show you. Um, aside from being available in most stores that you'll kind of walk through, some of the items that you can pick up in the US as well, they're cheaper in Asia, so I did want to pick some of those up. Some of them are probably the same price, if not more expensive, to be honest. I would say most are cheaper. And I picked them up because they were visible and easy to access. But other than that, like I said, most of these you could probably pick up in the U.S. Artbox is not a store that we have in the U.S. So I figured this was something that I wouldn't necessarily find. But I figured these are stickers that you can find similar ones to at other stores. I got a bunch of deco stickers. Um, I got these two Shiba Inu ones. Um, these are both from Mind Wave Seals. I got one from Loft and one from Tokyo Hands. I believe this one's from Loft, this one's from Tokyo Hands. Um, they are both super cute and obviously Japan is super into Shibas. So there's a bunch of these just hanging out. I just wanted to pick them up. I also got this other <laughs> dog deco sheet. Um, this is from Korea. This is from Artbox. It's just a bunch of stickers. They are embossed. So I would keep that in mind for whenever I put it in a planner. They're pretty cheap. So this is about a little less than $1.50. So it's about, I'd say $1.20. So this Korea sticker I actually got in Japan, which was kind of funny. I tried to look for the Tokyo one, but they literally didn't have any, which was so interesting. And I figured it is because obviously when you're in Japan, you might live there and you would be traveling somewhere else. But I figured there's so many tourists that there would be a Japan one, but they didn't. So I did just pick this up. These two are both Korea um, inspired stickers or Korea related stickers. This one's more landmarks and some food. This one's a lot more food focused. This one I got from Artbox in Korea as well. I figured this would be super cute to put in my journaling spreads for Korea. For Japan, to be honest, I have no idea what I'm gonna do just because I don't necessarily have a bunch of stickers related to Japan, but we'll see how that goes. I'll go through some miscellaneous items first before I go into some of the bigger and more planner related categories. Um, so one random thing that I picked up is Instax Black Mini Film. Um, I think I've used Instax Film in my bullet journal before and showed it to you guys. I'm not 100% sure actually. Um, but I've never seen the black film, so I just wanted to get that. Um, this is not the monochrome film that's completely different. It's just that the frame itself is black. I got these at Don Quixote's and I just thought it was super cool. Um, there were so many different kinds of film there. I should have picked up more. It's probably slightly cheaper, if not the same price, to be honest, as one that you could get off of Amazon. But because I don't typically see what kind of films even exist, I don't tried to find them but i thought these ones were super cool that i had to pick them up i just took this out of the packaging but i wanted to get a small ruler to use in my bullet journal and i was gonna use i was gonna pick up some just really random like ruler but i figured hey i'm in japan i should find some really kawaii um ruler to use this is a pastel purple kirby one that i got from kitty land um, it has like a little bit of glitter on it. I don't think you can see it. You can probably see it on camera a little bit, just some of the specs. It's just a short um, 14, 15 centimeter ruler. Random adhesive before I get into like washi tapes, which is I guess also an adhesive. But I got the Pit Tombow Pit glue tape. Tombow glue tapes in general are pretty popular because they are so good. I want to just pick it up because it was there. I got the 5 meter one. These are acid free and refillable. So I can just pick up the refills for this. Um, and it's also the permanent one. 
This one I picked up from Loft in Tokyo. Let's get into washi tapes. So one of the first ones I picked up is from is a Hello Kitty washi tape. It's just a what is this? Seven point five millimeter. That's not typically a size that we use. I find I think there are some washies that are seven point five millimeters, especially if you get ones from Michaels or something like that. But this one I did pick up from Giftgate, which is basically a Sanrio store in Ikebukuro in Tokyo. Going with the theme of character washies from specialty stores, I picked up some Pikachu washies from the Pokemon store. This one is a living with Pikachu washi. To be honest, I have no idea when I will use this. Um, but there were different colors of this at the Pokemon store and I decided to pick up a more traditional yellow one. I also don't have a lot of yellow washies. I also picked up this galaxy-ish celestial washi. It's like this darker blue. I think it gradients into purple over here. Um, of a Pikachu pair. So one's female and one's male. You know that one's female because one of them has a heart-shaped tail. So it's super cute. This I got from Daiso in Korea, but it's just this 10 set of six millimeter washi. Um, I thought that was such a good deal. Just like pastel colors, um, 10 of them for a little less than a dollar. That was such a good deal that I for sure wanted to make sure I picked this up. So these washies I got from Loft in Tokyo. So first I got this skinny rainbow washi. I got this, this is a four millimeter washi. Kind of interesting just the washi sizes just because we typically use probably five, 10 and 15 millimeter washi. Um, but the washies you can find in stores there are just such different sizes. This is super cool. These are such small rolls, but they're actually five millimeter washi. I wanted to open it up and focus on it on camera, but it is so hard just given how thin these washies are. This one specifically, I can't. Um, these are just like little diamond um, sparkle shapes in silver. Um, but this one is super cute. It has like, it's like a cut line thing. So it's like dashed lines with um, the scissors and they are rose gold foil. These other two washies are actually writable with pen. So your writing will not smudge on them. The first one is this light pink with gold stars. And then this one's a brighter pink with light pink hearts. I forgot to add these late earlier, but this I also got from Loft in Tokyo. This is just a floral washi with some blossoms. I thought this was super cute. Last bit of washi, but I got some grid tapes in both Korea and Japan actually. Um, this was one of the things that I really wanted to pick up in Asia just because I could have ordered them online, but would be super cool to find them in stores. So I just wanted to pick up a couple of colors while I found them. So this first one I actually got from Artbox in um, Korea, um, the Myeongdong store like I mentioned, and it's just this kind of reddish brown grid color. I won't open these just because it's just grid tape. You can see what they look like for the most part. These five I got from Tokyo Hands in Ikebukuro. Um, so I got this silver one, this yellow and green one, black and white, light blue, and then a green one. My boyfriend was so nice and went through all the washi to try to find me grid tape. Um, I found the art box one obviously in Korea and we did go to Korea first and I found that. But this was really my mission to find MT washi in the grid pattern. So it was super cool to be able to actually find them. I think we found these pretty much on our like second to last day. You can literally find washi at every store in Japan, even like specialty stores that are not art supply stores. Um, but I was just looking for very specific ones. I picked up all the colors that I could at that Tokyo hand store. The last and most exciting planner thing that I picked up from my Asia trip is a Hobonichi Weeks. I did used to use a Hobonichi Techo um, about a year or two ago. Um, I did journal in it before I went the bullet journaling route. Um, and I avoided the Hobonichi Weeks forever. I know everyone and their mom has a Hobonichi Weeks. I mentioned super briefly earlier in the video that I do have a PP Weeks and I like it, but I think I kind of like the horizontal view on the Hobonichi Weeks a little better. I'm gonna open this bad boy up real quick. So this is the 2020 book. I got the cover, which it's like this rubbery one and it's this kind of gray color, I think. It's this gray color. It's not a pure black, which I thought was super nice. And I like it because I won't necessarily have to get a cover for this just because it is this more rubbery texture and not like leather or paper or anything. So it does start in 
technically December of 2019. Um, so there are a couple of days in November, which is super cool. So I get to start using this at the end of November. Like I mentioned, there is this horizontal view, which so many of you have seen the Hobonichi weeks from a bunch of people. So I'm not going to go in depth with that. Um, the price of it was definitely cheaper. It was right around $20, which I think if you buy them US, they're probably $27, $28. So I did get a good bit of savings just from picking it up in Japan since that was already there. I do like the paper on this. It's the Tomoe River paper, which you could watercolor on. It can hold so much even though it's thin paper. But yeah, that's super exciting. But anyways, that is my entire haul from Korea and Japan. Now that I've gone through and put everything in the pile, I can totally tell that I didn't really pick up too many things stationary wise, but I'm super excited and you'll probably see me using these products in future videos pretty soon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this haul video and stay tuned for my journaling spreads for Korea and Japan. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.